welcome everyone to our another youtube video and today we bring you another hardware review and this time it's arctic liquid freezer 3 arctic liquid freezer 3 is the successor to the very successful ai lineup liquid freezer 2 we'll be starting with the unboxing and installation procedure for the aio followed by the explanation of testing methodology to overview the testing methodology we have uh, performed tests over four pro different cpu profiles two of them uh, are based around pbo and two of the uh, uh, testing profiles are static overclocked so let's unbox um, our first liquid freezer 3 that is liquid freezer 420 the contents of the box are um, the aio itself the pump and the hat come separately they aren't attached no, i mean they come within the box but they aren't attached they are provided in a separate manner so that you can install the block first and then put on the cap and you also get the mounting accessories which comes with an x6 thermal paste all the cables and mounting brackets and this is the contact frame for LGA 1700 Intel based CPU. This is actually pretty solid plate, it's metal. But we won't be needing that since we are performing all our testing on AM4. Yes. This is this is a chunky one, if you'd say. Damn. Please peel off. Okay, buddy. Life hacks. Oh, this is nice. The last uh, liquid freezer uh, had them in a fixed position, so it was a bit inconvenient uh, in certain situations where you had to route the pipes, but pivotable pipes are nice. And then comes the hat, which also has a VRM fan. You can see that. Oh, the protection peel as well. Nice. And those are the contact pads that will make contact with the pads on the block here. Nice. So let's see. Install this one and. We'll be comparing it against the 360, which I have taken out, and it's it has been my main AIO the past two years, three actually now. And we'll of course, and this is what I was talking about: fixed pipes. It's easier, harder to mount in certain situations. Right, um, we'll do the installation part.
for our benchmarking system we picked uh, ryzen 9 5950x as our uh, testing cpu this cpu runs uh, hot even out of the box without any exotic overclock or boost profiles um, it can draw up to 250 watt on cpu package power but why stop there we have static overclock profile on the cpu which can make it draw 306 watt on cpu package power this is as close as we could get to the uh, high-end intel cpu range of 3900 or 4900k to emulate cooling effect on those cpu of course the results won't be one to one uh, because of the different factors like uh, different ihs size on the lg 1700 sockets and uh, different core layout uh, throughout the CPU on the Intel counterparts. The four profiles are as following. Um, since 5950X is a dual CCD CPU, we tested two profiles with both the CCDs and two profiles are using only one CCD to emulate uh, results on the lower end CPU, uh, lower end single CCD CPU such as 5800X. It has been found out that cooling down single CCD CPU is a bit harder than the uh, dual CCD CPUs because they tend to boost higher than the dual CCD CPUs and uh, the power draw is being concentrated into the single region of the CPU of the, the processor. So it's pretty hard for the coolers to compensate with that heat density and the evidence for this uh, was observed throughout the testing and benchmarking uh, and as we'll see later in the video. The two profiles on dual CCD configuration, uh, the first one is a precision boost overdrive curve with the 200 megahertz of boost offset it's it's no hack uh, it won't uh, perform better if the cooling is worse than anything uh, on the stock surprisingly 5950x doesn't come with a stock cooler i wonder why anyways moving to the static overclock part um we configured the cpu to run all 16 cores at 4.6 6 to 5 gigahertz 4.625 gigahertz all core all the time at 1.3 uh, 3 to 5 volts that made cpu jump its uh, t max which is the maximum safe operation temperature of uh, 95 degrees celsius a couple of times that's why i mentioned earlier we tried to push this cpu and basically it was driven to its limits for the benchmarking purposes and getting uh, maximum performance uh, for these AIOs. For the single CCD com uh, conf uh, profiles, uh, it's the same suit. We have a PPU curve and static OC. For static OC on single CCD, we were able to push the cores, uh, the eight cores to 4.775 gigahertz at 1.32 volt. Again, as I mentioned in the uh, beginning of the video, that uh, single CCD CPUs are harder to cool down because they boost higher. This actually shows that uh, a single CCD can be pushed uh, around a gigahertz more than the uh, dual CCD configuration. For uh, testing PVU profiles, we ran 10 minute uh, thermal throttling test on Cinebench R23, multi-threaded and single threaded as well. For testing static overclock, we ran four consecutive runs of uh, Cinebench R23 multi-threaded and took out the average uh, temperatures delta. All the testing was done on 22 degrees Celsius uh, controlled environment. The room was this, uh, it was being done in this room. And uh, we had a multimeter with a thermal probe monitoring the temperature all the time. Uh, we kept it controlled at 22 degrees Celsius. For PPU, we also um, collected some more data, you know, such as uh, Cinebench R23 scores, to demonstrate the effect of uh, cooling on the performance of the dual ccd configuration and single ccd configuration how the cpu performs uh, better or worse than the uh, pre previous aios or like or, or the baseline that we established and uh, we also uh, collected the average package power draw because that will be the deciding factor for how high the cores can boost because of the thermal headroom available Let's start with establishing a baseline with previous generation Liquid Freezer 2 360mm AIO. And for single CCD PPU profile, in multi-threaded testing, the average CPU temperature delta was 57.63 while drawing 163.4 watts on CPU package power. And it scored uh, 15759 on CBR23 multi-thread. As for single thread, the temperature delta was the 35.73 and it scored 16.49 while drawing 64.69 nice watts on the CPU package bar. Moving on to the multi-threaded PPU profiles, uh, the CPU temperature delta was 57.86 
while drawing 231.4 watts on CPU package and scoring 29031. As you can see, the average temperature delta on single CCD and dual CCD isn't very different, but the, there's a drastic change in the power draw. So it was a, it was hard to keep the single CCD cooler even when it was drawing less watt. Single CCD, single threaded uh, benchmarks. Uh, the average uh, CPU temperature delta was 35.53 while drawing 70.28 watts and scoring 1639. Moving on to our first AIO from the Liquid Freezer 3 lineup, Liquid Freezer 3 to 40. The average temperature delta was 58.7 uh, while drawing 164.5 watts on the CPU package and scoring 15810. In single threaded operation, the Liquid Freezer 2 240 was able to keep the temperature delta 36.06 .06 while drawing 64 watts on the package and scoring 1650. In dual CCD configuration, the Liquid Freezer 3 240 was able to keep the CPU temperature delta 56.98, which is lower than the single CCD profile, uh, while drawing 230 watts and it scored 29 uh, 429 really a huge improvement over the lf2 360 on the score there and uh, in single threaded operation the cpu temperature delta was 34.54 uh, while drawing 70 watts and scoring 1650 on static oc profiles a uh, liquid freezer 3240 was able to keep the uh, temperature delta at 64.6 for single CCD and 74.7 at dual CCD. Moving on to Liquid Freezer 3 to 80, the average CPU temperature delta was 58.34 uh, while drawing 165 watts on package and scoring 1528. This is uh, during the single CCD multi-threaded PPO testing on Cinebench R23 and uh, single CCD single threaded testing. Uh, we have a uh, temperature delta of 35.8 while drawing 63.5 watts and scoring 1656. For dual CCD configuration, the multi-threaded testing average CPU temperature delta was uh, 56.27 uh, while drawing 231 watts and it scored uh, 29,422. While in single threaded operations, the average temperature delta was 35.16 while drawing 70 watts and scoring 1647. In static OC testing, Liquid Freezer 3280 was able to keep the temperature delta at 63.87 for single CCD and 72.65 for dual CCD. Moving on to the true successor of the R baseline, a Liquid Freezer 3 360. The average CPU temperature delta in single CCD multi-threaded configuration was 56.97 at 167 watts, scoring 15940. The single CCD single thread testing gave us a temperature delta of 35.74 at 63.27 watts and scoring 1654. For dual CCD multi-threaded PBO testing uh, in Cinebench R23, Liquid Freezer 3360 gave us the average CPU temperature delta of 56.97 at 231.7 watts, scoring 29.469. Nice. And for single threaded on dual CCD, the average CPU temperature delta was 33.84 at 71.88 watts and scoring 1646. For static OC configuration, the Liquid Freezer 3 was able to keep this CPU temperature, average CPU temperature delta at 61.97 for single CCD and 71 for dual CCD. And moving to the last AIO in the lineup, uh, Liquid Freezer 3 420, the average CPU temperature delta was 57.57 while drawing 165 watts and scoring 15913 on single CCD multi-threaded PPO testing and the same for uh, single threaded was 36.95 temperature delta at 63.97 watts and scoring 1653. For dual CCD multi-threaded PPO testing, the Liquid Freezer 3 420 was able to keep the average CPU temperature delta to 54.24 while drawing 231 watts and scoring uh, 29510. This was the best score uh, in CPR23 dual CCD configuration. For dual CCD single threaded, uh, the average CPU temperature delta was 35.42 while drawing 76.2 watts, scoring 16.44. For static overclock, the Liquid Freezer 3 420 was able to keep average CPU temperature delta for single CCD at 63.5 and for dual CCD 72.4. On comparing the results side by side, uh, it was clear there were improvements all across the board. LF3 promised performance and it actually delivers, there's no doubt about that. 
all the results were impressive and somewhat sensible for a good successor to a product that had AIO thrown for a long while. Liquid Freezer 2 lineup was really impressive and uh, held it position for a, for a long while. Liquid Freezer 3 is uh, great at what it does as this can be observed. Even when the 240mm AIO is competing against the large Gen 360, the progressive increase in radiator sizes in the current lineup is there but uh, the returns diminish after a certain point as as we can see the difference between uh, 360 and 420 mm radiators isn't that uh, that much now coming to the major con of the product um it's the availability arctic is uh, really trying to keep up with the high demand of the product in the market on the global scale and um, speaking of global scale arctic products aren't available in india for past year or so and the reasons for this are unknown uh, to us. The whatever supplies available in the market is of old products, uh, which were just sitting in the sales or warehouse of the sellers. And uh, even we had to import these units for uh, performing the tests and benchmarks. Importing such hardware is uh, a hassle, at least to say hassle is quite an understatement, but this is a, uh, another rant video about how things work. So I'm gonna make peace with it. Um, as of making this video, there, there is no uh, expected dates or time for which these AIOs will be available in the market. Um, Arctic is trying their best to improve the supply chain here, establish a supply chain in India. And I hope we see that uh, happening in the near time. Because for the launch price uh, due to their 23rd anniversary sale, this, these are crazy insane deals for what they are offering. Well, that's it for the benchmarking video. And if you like the video, please hit like and share the video with your friends or anyone who you know is interested in PC making or the PC industry and likes to keep up with the new hardware in the market. Subscribe to our channel for uh, such future videos. Drop your uh, reviews about this video and any possible ideas of what should we do in our next videos in the comment section. Also join our Discord server. Uh, we have a very uh, pretty chill community and we really love to help newcomers as well as the already existing enthusiasts with their uh, problems and just chill around. We'll be linking down the Discord uh, in the description as well. The, that'll be all. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye.